Hi there. Uh, this is an example of a forecasting method that includes both a trend component and a seasonal component. So it's called the linear trend multiplicative method. So we have data here on the monthly sales of marine flares for two years, so 2008 and 2009. I've plotted that data on this chart. And I can see that this, these sales do have a seasonal component. There's a repeating pattern. And that makes sense because uh, marine flares expire after four years. So everyone that owns a boat has to go out every four years and purchase new flares. We can see the peak is at the beginning of the boating season in May and continues sort of through most of the boating season. There's another mini peak in January, uh, which is the uh, big boat show. So we've got this data. The first thing to do, we, we also notice from this chart that there's likely a trend component because the 2009 sales are higher than the 2008 sales. So for, to convert, we want to convert this to a time series where we would have the months as months 1 to 24 and just copy the data from 2008 into months 1 to 12 and the data from 2009 goes into months 13 to 24. We're also going to want to forecast next year's sales. So I've included months 25 to 26. I've plotted this data as well, the set sold data over here, and we can see the repeating pattern. We can actually add a trend line if we wanted to add a trend line, ask it to display the equation on the chart. So there's the equation of our trend line. For the trend component, we can use that equation to, to calculate a trend value for each of these months. In other words, what would be the value on that trend line uh, for each month? I could use the equation, and we'll see how to do that in a minute or so. I could also use a, a, a function in Excel called trend. Now, trend is an array function. And array functions are a little different. For an array function, you have to first select all of the cells that you want it to make calculations for. So I want trend values from months 1 to 24. So I select all those cells first, and then I say equals trend. And it says, where are your known Ys? So this trend line is just like a regression line. My dependent variable is my set sold. So that's my Y's, comma. My independent variable, or my X's, are, is time, or my months. So I show it my months. And for an array function, you don't press Enter. You have to hold down the Control key, the Shift key, and then press, press Enter. <clears throat> So it's calculated a trend value for each of my months here. Now the seasonal factor in a multiplicative model is just the, my actual divided by the trend. Because we can see that the, the, the actual values are quite different from the trend values uh, during the seasonal lulls and the seasonal peaks. So this will give us give me a factor that I can use um, to adjust for the seasonal component of the forecast. So this is going to be equal to set sold divided by the trend value. And I get a seasonal factor for each of these 24 months. Copy that down and paste. 
Now the seasonal factor for January in the first year is 0 0.909. For January in the second year, it was 1.061. Similarly, my busy month, May, 1.277. And uh, May for the next year is 1.360. So what I really want is an average seasonal factor for each month. So I'm going to copy the first 12 months of seasonal factors, copy those, and I'm going to paste them in this table over here. But those cells contain formulas. So if I paste it here, if I just do a regular paste, control V, uh, I've got a problem. So I'll hit control Z. What I have to do is paste values. So if I right click the second little box under the paste options is paste values. So that just takes the value instead of the formula. So the same thing for the next 12 months. I'll copy, I'll come here, I'll right click and say paste values. So I've got my seasonal factors for both years there. I want to get an average seasonal factor for January. So equals average. Copy that down. So I've got an average for each month. I want to then copy these averages over into my table here. Now again, that's a formula, so I have to paste values. So 1 to 12, I will paste values. And here I will paste values. And then I'm going to want those seasonal factors for my next 12 months as well. So I'll paste them in now. Okay, so I've got seasonal factors for that next, um, for the third year, the year I'm trying to forecast. I still need trend values for months 25 to 36. I can do that. Um, I could go and I could get the trend line equation off of my chart here, but then I would have to type in those numbers. I can also use another array function that will give me the, trend, the parameters of the line. So this function is called line est. It's going to give me the B parameter first and then the A parameter. And it's an array function again, so I have to, it's going to use those calculation formulas that we saw for least squares lines. So I have to select both of the cells that I want it to calculate because this is an array function. I say equals line est. I again show it where my Y values are comma, show it where my x values are, and then control shift enter. And so now I have my parameters. So I can get my trend value from the equation of the line. So that trend is going to, that value is going to be equal to a plus b times my value of x. Now, the row 58 numbers there have to be absolute references, so I'll use F4 to put in my dollar signs, say enter, and then I can copy that formula down for the remaining months in the third year there. So now I'm going to calculate a forecasted value for all three years. So my forecasted value is going to be equal to the trend value times the average seasonal factor. So my forecast for that first month would be 87. I'm going to copy that down.
So my forecasts for, here's my forecast for year three. So I'm going to expect sales 99 sets of, to sell 99 sets of flares in January of the next year, going up to a peak of 135 in May, 127 in June, down to 88 towards the end of the year. I've also graphed over here this data. So we can see our actual for the first two years is the red line. The forecast for all three years, so the forecast is following the actual very closely for the first two years, and then we've got our forecast for year three. So that's the linear trend multiplicative method of doing a forecast that includes both a trend component and a seasonal component.